elijahplanet.net, which didn't have, it was .org, and then I got the .net a couple years later, but I had started it with .com, the hyphen, and then I ended up converting it to the non-hyphen, so I actually own both. So if you type in myjaplanet-hyphen.com, it takes you to the same site. I, I own all of them. At least I tried to anyways. And <laughs> anyways, so yeah, you might be wondering why I have a Deadpool shirt on too. We're going to get to that, guys. We're I'm getting... I'm going to ramble a little bit. Hopefully uh, I can edit this out to something that you guys enjoy watching. Anyways, so my journey as a content creator has been long and wild. You know, I had a lot of ups and downs in my life. You know, I don't want to go too much into my personal life, but I, I will say for the most part is I've had a somewhat traumatic life. That's like exaggerating it really because I've always had the mentality that no matter how bad things have gotten for me, somebody has it worse and I should be grateful because it could always be worse. I should make that a t-shirt, it could always be worse. Anyways, I'm sure there's already a t-shirt like that, but yeah, I've started, I've tried, you know, the whole theme was, you know, make money online, you tried online stores, you know, didn't work. Um, a lot of it's been like my own personal, like all up in here, you know. I'll have an idea for a video and I'll have the entire video in my head and that's as far as it goes a lot. A couple times I have gotten the video out and then like I've done it and I'm not happy with it. Like one of the most popular videos on this channel is my review of the Dragon Megatron from Transformers Beast Wars, or I'm sorry, Beast Machine, it was Beast Machine. The only reason I did that review was because the idea was I was gonna do that review because the, the Legacy one was coming out. And I figured that'd be cool if I could do like a comparison of the two, which I ended up not, well, because the one from Beast Machine is different than the one from Transmetals, which is in Transmetals 2, uh, Megatron from Beast, Beast Wars Neo, which whatever one it was. And I did that review, and it's one of the most popular reviews on the channel. I can tell you guys right now, I did that review in an entire, I did everything, the editing, the the voiceover, like all of that. I did that in like span of a couple hours. And I, I did it because I wanted to do it. And personally for the longest time was like how many people like this video i i did not like it. it like i just felt like it was not my best work and yet it has the most views on the channel and so, a lot of my videos which i put i don't want to say i put bare minimum effort but i put bare minimum effort when it comes to like process like tell you like these big youtube gurus tell you oh you gotta you gotta have to like the script and learn how to be a script writer and then you gotta edit your video you gotta you gotta plan your video out and you got to record it and, and then you got to do your b-roll and then you got to edit it and then you got to put your sound effects and do your color grading i don't do any of that crap i don't and it shows maybe i'll like it but here's the thing i've been watching youtube a lot over the last couple of years and like and like watch channels that are really i in my personal opinion feel like they just turn the camera on and they just start talking and then they just do barely minimum editing, like maybe edit it with them walking up to turn off the camera and stuff, all they edit out. And I see them getting a hundreds of thousands of views. And I see other people that do bare minimum edits and they're getting, and their channel's growing. And then I've seen people who do absolutely zero editing and they don't do color, they don't do any of that stuff all the, the YouTube gurus tell you to do. Some of them don't even do the thumbnails. They just, whatever the screenshot is of the video is, that's the thumbnail. And they have millions of, not just views, but millions of fans. I think for me, my biggest problem that has kept this channel from growing has kept me from continuing to make content. Because as you guys can see, I got a lot of cool stuff. Like I'll do a lot of stuff on here that I've never done reviews for. I've never done a review on the Party Wagon. I've got Toxic Crusader right here. I've got, you know, E-Man, you open it off camera, you can't see back here. I got all these He-Man figures you know, I could do review for. I think for me, the biggest issue has been I have done, I get like the headspace where like, okay, I'm going to make a video. Every day I'm going to make a video and I'm just going to do it no matter how bad it is. And then I do the video and I put it out and it gets like news and I get discouraged because like, like I thought that was going to be really good, but maybe it wasn't good because I didn't do that. And then I start watching and then I go down the rabbit hole and I start watching all these uh YouTube uh, people. Now, granted, I think the biggest issue on why that people aren't watching my content, and I don't think it's not necessarily that people don't like my content. I think people aren't finding my content because YouTube is designed a certain way 
and I'm not feeding what it wants. And while I could just do toy reviews and eventually I would run, I have a lot of toys that I haven't reviewed. The problem is a lot of them are older toys now, or I've missed the mark of when it was popular to do that video for it. Like I have all the Dinobots now. And yeah, I could probably do a review on Scoop, Scoop, Ice Cream. But I've never done any, I think I might have done one. No, the, I started doing reviews on the Titan Returns. No, Power of the Prime Dinobots. And I stopped because those videos got no views. And I figured, well, maybe it was the way I'm doing the video. Like just nobody likes the way I did the video. So I stopped doing videos that way. And then once I stopped doing a video a certain way, and then I got into the habit of doing videos a certain way because I thought it was, I was always trying to find ways to make things easier because like I just, and that's where the, do I want to be a YouTuber? Do I want to be a content creator moment hit me? Because I'll be honest with you, most days when I come home from work, there are three things I want to do. I either just want to go to bed and then I wake up like at nine o'clock and then I just, I want to do something. And then I don't have any time to do something because I have to go back to bed. Then I'm tired as crap the next day and the cycle just continues. Or I come home and I just play World of Warcraft. That's all I do. And like I should stream it, right? I did try streaming like I'd be doing, but then I found that what I was, when I streamed it, I did something completely different than what I would do if I wasn't streaming. Like in terms of like, like my, like I figure like John, my, my characters and setting up stuff and doing this and testing this that nobody wanted to watch that. So I would just like, okay, today we're just going to level this character or today we're just going to do this farm or whatever. That's all I would do. And then like, I don't know, like passion wasn't there because it's not really what I want to do. I really want to do those other stuff and, and like sit AFK a lot too. And, and then watch videos, <laughs> of course. And so I stopped streaming because then nobody was watching me. You know, I have my friends who want to play Fortnite. I, I enjoy playing Lego Fortnite and I enjoy playing just regular Fortnite, but I don't like playing it all the time. And what happened was like with people that were watching, now I'm playing with them and now nobody's watching the stream. So now I'm like, okay, I was just playing. So I don't have to stream that. So then I stopped streaming that altogether because I figured nobody's watching anyways and I'm never going to get discovered because I'm streaming, f I'm a small, low bottom, of, like the floor streamer, despite streaming since 2016 and as well as I did on Facebook and all that and, and on YouTube, I, well, I didn't do very well on YouTube, but I tried on Mixer, but that was garbage and I just, I'm not going to do kick, just not going to do it. This is a waste of time. It just feels like arbitrary to the point where like, I've been doing this since 2016 and if I were to go live right now and someone were to discover me and go, oh my God, you're so like, did you just start streaming? This is amazing. Nah, man, I've been doing this for a long time. Like I go back and like one of my first streams that I still have mods, I still have up. Like I used to do Hearthstone. It's really bad. I, I, I feel like my production value in terms of streaming has increased significantly. I feel like for the average streamer, the average Joe Schmo, who comes home from work and then goes and play video game for two, three hours streaming it. I feel like I'm above them. I don't say personality wise. Cause I think the biggest problem I have is my personality sucks because I'm weird because when I'm at work, I'm it is it's an uh, introvert or whatever, like outgoing, like always willing to help people, like talking to people, I'm having chats, customers, I'm talking to people, you know, that. but then like I get home or like when I get off work, I become an introvert. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't even hardly talk to my friends. Like I don't want to say I blow them off, but a lot of times like I don't respond right away. And then like I don't date because that's a waste of damn time. So as a result of that, I don't socialize for the most part. And, and, I, and I don't say you don't have to date to socialize, but you know, you're dating somebody, usually you end up socializing for the most part with another person uh, or with other people. And, like I don't even do that. And I have friends who, like play game nights and I just don't want to because I just I get home. I'm just kind of done for the day. And so that's made it very hard to even just turn the camera on. That's uh, one thing that I learned from Think Media was like, you just got to turn the camera on, which is what I'm doing right now, which is like, I, I, I thought to myself, what I want to do, I want to make a video about why I started YouTube and why I continue to attempt to do YouTube. I don't know if that's going to be the title, but it's just kind of what I thought. I'm just going to ramble. And I thought to myself, you know, those things where I enjoy collecting and I have a lot of knowledge when it comes to Transformers, uh, Super Sentai, Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, you know, and you know, a lot of stuff that most people don't care about. I have a couple friends at work that are always happy to hear what I have to say. And I'll have some really cool conversations with people. Then I sit there after I have that conversation, I go, damn, that'd be a really good video. And then I get home and I don't remember what I said, or I just, I don't have the energy. Because the third thing I do when I get home 
as I just put on and watch TV. And it's been like, you either just rewatch Dragon Ball again, or watch rewatch Dragon Ball Super again, or we watch Dragon Ball Z, or I, I've been rewatching like Hero Academia. I think I've watched that show now five times. Um, still have still not as many times I watched the entire Dragon Ball in, in entirety, like Dragon Ball all the way to Super. That includes that includes GT. I still watch GT. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. And it's just like, or, or like, yeah, like, I just started being watching Transformers again, like Ready One Cartoon. You know, it's like, oh, you know, try to find a new anime and I'll try to get into it. Like this one is called, it's called Flirts in Russian. Sometimes Flirts in Russian or something like that. It's only 12 episodes and I was, oh man, it just came out. I was disappointed because I wanted to like watch the entire thing. Yeah, I just come home either watching TV or like I'm going to bug up my butt. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to rearrange my entire house. And I rearrange my entire house and everything. And it's stupid that I do that. But I do. I think right now I'm pretty happy where everything's at. I feel like I have enough space and I do have a pile of toys, clip stuff that I was like, oh, I got this because like, I want it for my collection. Or I'm going to, I was stuffed in the box because I want to do a review on it. I want to do a review, I want to do a review on it. I have some figures that I just finally opened up that I bought for the sole intention of doing a review on it. Then I got to the point where I was like, okay, either I'm going to just get rid of this figure or I'm going to open it and put it on my shelf. And then it's, oh, I have this idea for a display. So I put it on my shelf. Like I have like here, uh, this on the top here, it's hard to see the lights starting to go out on it. Basically, it's like my childhood. You know, I have the neck of turtles down here on uh, this shelf right here. And this is like, I like example, I've got uh, you know, the missing link. That's my representation for Transformers on this shelf. I've got a Power Ranger figure, uh, the Megazord. It's, it was a cheap Megazord figure that I got at Walmart. Um, they were like a pack. I think it was like a, there were two packs, like three. It was just a T-Rex Zord. Then the other one was, you know, the Mastodon and Pterodactyl. And then the other one was, like, Saber Tooth Tiger and Triceratops. There were two packs in there. They don't have very good articulation. They were each, like, fucks apiece. I have the Zap Megazord, and I have the Thunder Megazord, and it's on display in my hallway. I have, like, a little shelf that's my Power Ranger designation of, like, what my mechs are, basically. But I feel like this is my childhood. I grew up with Power Rangers in the 90s. You grew up watching He-Man. I grew up watching Turtles. I remember I grew up watching Toxic Crusader, Thundercats, RoboCop, The Rocketeer, Star Wars, Back to the Future, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie in 1990. Um, you know, I actually have a Voltron. Uh, shout out to uh, Starfighter Comics. I bought a model kit over this last weekend at, at SuperCon. At SuperCon, yeah, I, I got it at their booth. You know, sixty dollars, and it's a model kit. You know, a transformable model kit. Uh, Voltron, and the only reason I got it is like that'll go perfect on the shelf. You know, representation of Voltron. I also bought Street Sharks because that was also a show that I grew up on too, and I enjoyed. So I bought that. So I have Street Sharks to put on the shelf as well. And then I also the last thing I really need for the shelf would be a Dick, a Dick Tracy figure, a Ultraman figure, which I actually have a Funko Pop for, but I think I'd rather have like a regular figure of Ultraman. I don't mean like newer ones. I mean like the first Ultraman. And then I think that's it. Oh, Silver, oh, Silverhawks. But I haven't decided yet because the only figures that have been out that I saw have been the Super 7 ones. I don't know if I want to do that because they're expensive and I would, they would need another shelf, basically. And I don't have room for another shelf, unfortunately. So I have to do with the space that I have. You know, I've got a couple things that I need to figure out in terms of shelf and spacing-wise. And then display stuff. So, you know, and like I like to do a room tour so you got, or a house tour, I guess, for the most part. So you guys can check that out and be like, oh, that's super cool and stuff. I mean, all my cool stuff and everything. But it's just been very difficult to do all this. And I've made peace with the fact that at 41 years old, I'll be 42 years old this year, that at my peak, which I have given myself to age 50, I said by age 50, if I haven't gotten to at least 5,000 subscribers on this channel, but in the next like eight years, like eight, nine years, if I can't do that, and that's lowballing it right there. Like, I'm at 1,700, yeah, 1,700 subscribers. If I can't get to 5,000 subscribers within the next, like, five years, I'm probably going to just retire doing YouTube altogether. And, like, keep the website out. And every now and then, if I have an opinion on something and I want to share it with the world, I might post it or write a blog about it. But for the most part, I think I'll just, you know, the rest of my life. And, you know, my collection and grow it and change it and, and, and have it evolve the way I want it. And then maybe I'll have time to actually make the dioramas for each display that I want to do. That was the main thing I want to do. I just don't have the energy or time. It's like, well, I guess I could do a diorama today or I could start it or I could make a YouTube video. 
ah, screw it, I'm just gonna watch TV. Ah, screw it, I'm just gonna, like, gonna play WoW or something. Or play, like, uh, Daisy or play uh, one team in which I've been enjoying too. Or I'm just gonna pull out one of my third-party Transformers that I don't remember how to transform. I'm having to look up a video for it and then transform it. And, like, that's cool, I'll mess with it for a couple of days and then, like... Going for it, the main reason why I'm, I'm making this video today is I want to let you guys know that I'm not gone. And I don't want to make any promises like I'm going to make a video every day or make a video once a week. Because I I made the promise once there's a new video daily and it didn't work out after like a month. Maybe even not a month. I don't want to make a promise I'm going to do a video every day because that's unrealistic for me. I just, I'm going to have my days. I think what I want to do is I think my biggest issue is I need to open up more and and spend at least half the week sharing my feelings, my fandom, whether it be making a YouTube video, live streaming, or writing a blog post, and just sharing it with the world, share putting it out there, knowing that nobody's going to read it, nobody's going to watch it, nobody's going to be there at the live, nobody's going to chat with me. Be okay with that. Because even though I put it out today and maybe tomorrow or the next week or the month, nobody watches it. But eventually, I've had some videos where people have found and they have commented. Like, I had a, a YouTube short that I cut from a full video where I showcased the uh, the Grand Geo watch. And I love that thing. I think it was a love that thing. And it sucks that I haven't been able to display it yet because displaying rider belts are hard to figure out. And unfortunately, one of my rider belts, actually, the belt snapped. It was on, I, I had a garbage can, and I flipped it upside down, and it was sitting there. And just one day I heard a pop, and I what the hell, and actually the belt broke. I don't even know how that happened. It wasn't on there very tight. I don't think it was, so I don't know how that happened. But uh, maybe the plastic expanded or something because of the heat. I don't know. And anyways, so, like, and then right now the Zio uh, driver, the Eco driver is actually, the battery's dead on it, so it doesn't actually do anything. But... I have been, like, I was surprised someone commented on it. Like, it was a cool, that was pretty cool. And I was like, oh, yeah, there it is. It's still pretty, it's still in one of my favorite rider watches. One of my favorite belts. And I'm just like, wow, that, that video is like two, two years. And somebody found that video. And they probably didn't look at anything else. But there's always that chance that someone might find a video that I did yesterday. And they go, oh, that was a really awesome video. And then they start, then they start like I do that. Like I find a video that I like. I'll watch a video, and they're like, oh, that's a cool video. And then I'll go to their channel and I'll start we'll see if they have what, what else they have. And I sometimes will binge watch what they have. And if they, if they have enough videos, I've gotten to the habit of not subscribing anymore because YouTube has this way now where they like based on what your watch history is. And if you watch the same creators all the time, they just always recommend you stuff. So a lot of times I don't subscribe to channels and I apologize for that because I know subscriber numbers is a big thing. I just made a big claim that if I don't get at least 5,000 subscribers by I'm 50 years old, I'm going to stop doing YouTube. The, the thing is like I, I not so much, I got to do content or make things that make me feel happy to share that with the world. That's what I'm going to be doing. So then there's all the whole like new niche down and I think my niche I figured it out. It's not doing Transformer content. It's not doing Power Ranger content. It's not doing Common Rider content. It's not doing reaction videos. It's me. I'm the niche. So that's what I need to start doing. I need to start making videos about me. So like, like I've watched everybody. I think I've watched almost everybody from the big guys to the guys who cheat the system and buy stolen toys to the people that get sent stuff early for free from Hasbro or like other party companies to people that are just like me and they're starting out and they have like subscribers and they're, they're they're passionate about it and they do their videos and they just keep doing them. Every time they get a new toy, they do it and they get like 500 views and they just keep making their videos because they don't care because they're passionate about what they're doing and they're just doing that one thing. And I need to do it where passion, like the way they do the videos, I'm like, oh, it's cool, but that's just boring. Like, I just like, like a lot of times I like, watch a Transformer video, like just like, how do you transform it? Just get to the transformation. I skip all the articulation. And I think that's one thing that I want to do differently that I think that I can bring to the table is that with modern figures, we they all have the butterfly joints. They all have articulation. 
It yep. sucks when a, a certain figure comes out and it doesn't have a certain articulation that we're used to, but do I really need to ramble on for 15 minutes about the articulation of the leg? No. I don't think anybody cares. If you care, let me know in the comments. Like, um, there was one, vi one video that I watched that actually made me buy a figure. That was the Unique Toys of Galvatron. And I don't think he's called Galvatron. Like, the, uh, the, not called Galvatron. But it, the toy is Galvatron from Age of Extinction. And the movie's not that good. But I liked it. But I saw Bobby Skullface's video on that figure and watching him fumble through it. And then, of course, I looked up a couple other people's videos. But his video, like, the way he showcased it, like, he want that figure. The minute I saw that video and I saw the figure, I was like, wow. It's just it's the way he did it. And he does a lot. Of, he does his videos all the same, too. Like, he goes, oh, first star. Let me show the accessories. Then he goes through all the articulation. And, and then he transforms it. And he almost breaks it as he transforms it. And then he goes through the articulation of the new transformation. Like, if it goes from vehicles, robot, or vice versa. And then he talks about, like, I don't like this about it. And then he's like, you know, he has his final verdict and everything like that. Just like Imgo does the same thing. Like, he starts off with the showcase, with a joke. Then he shows the box. And then he does the articulation, does the size comparisons. And then he does, you know, and then he does, you know, comparison. And then he does, you know, thoughts. And then he does a skit. All his videos are the same. Just insert toy. And that's what the difference is. And I'm not calling anybody out because these are really good, really awesome creators that... Don't even know who I am and would never even bat an eye to, to, to say hi to me or talk to me online. But even like Versus Prime, you know, I have feelings about because I feel like, you know, personally don't feel like he's stealing toys, but I feel like he's just getting stuff early and where he's getting it from is shady. Like they're getting it is shady. I can't fault somebody for wanting to get something first because I felt that way too about stuff. Like, man, I wish I could get this before anybody else. You know, just the coolest kid on the block, you know. Besides that, you know, those videos are done the same too. You know, I, I feel like that's what stopped me from doing. That's what kind of do the, the, the helmet thing. I thought that was a little different. But then, like, it's been very taxing on me to do this. And, and I said to myself, well, if it's too taxing and too draining on me, then don't do it. And that's what happened over the summer. I stopped doing it. And, and so now I think what I want to bring to the table, to this channel, to this brand, My Gym Planet brand, is I want to just be me. And if I'm like, man, I really just want to talk about this, you know, I'm just going to do that. And that's what's going to happen. Like, I built a new shadow box to do the reviews in. And I, I think I have an idea how I'm going to do the reviews. It's going to be a little unorthodox. And that's okay, because I got to look at it as like, when you buy something, how do you feel when you first open it up and do all that kind of stuff? So that's kind of where I'm at, guys. Um, I apologize for rambling on about a lot of different things. Um, if you did make it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this far. Be sure to hit that like button. I know that you liked the video and that you watched to the end there. And if you did enjoy watching the video, check out watching this one right here. And guys, as always, till next time.